Hey everyone, welcome back to the property. I hope you're having a great day. Uh, when I bought this land back in 2012, it didn't look uh, like it does now. And what you can see behind me, along these, these stone rows uh, at the edge of each field where you saw me trimming a few videos ago uh, with the brush hog, you weren't actually able to see these stone rows. There was at least four to six feet of growth uh, coming out from these stone rows. Uh, small trees, saplings that had started growing up, cedar trees, um, pricker bushes, um, multiflora rows, things like that um, that had started just creeping in from the edge when nobody was taking care of these fields. So I've spent a lot of time over the last uh, seven and a half years trimming this stuff up, cleaning it up. And uh, in fact, most fields that I have cleaned up, I can get an extra cut or two uh, width uh, with my hay bind when I'm mowing hay. So it gets me a little bit more hay. Um, it keeps things looking a lot nicer and it makes it a whole lot easier to maintain. Today, um, we're in one of the other fields. I've got about half done. Um, so far of the eight fields that I have that I cut hay in, totaling the 16 acres of hay that I have, I've got four fields completely done, uh, like the one I'm standing in, everything cut back and it's, like I said, really easy to maintain. Two of the fields are half done, uh, and then two of the fields I haven't started yet. Those two fields that I haven't started yet, they're two of the larger fields that I have that um, a neighbor rents from me uh, right now. Just with, with my normal job, um, I don't have the time to do all of these fields. Once I get a little bit more reliable, a little bit better equipment, things that I can move a little bit quicker with, um, I'll be able to do all of the fields again. I just expect that to be a couple more years. So uh, I'll take you over to the next field. I've got one half uh, of one edge done. I'm gonna use the pole saw and the weed eater today and just try to finish cleaning that up. So we'll see you over there. So this is uh, the first half of this field that I've already cleared. I did this last fall. Just trimmed some of the lower hanging branches off some of these trees. The trees that are growing right at the edge of the field, I've kind of started to take them down. The smaller ones, that is at least. Any of the mature growth trees like this right here, I'm just trimming back just enough uh, so that they're, they're not growing right over the fields and I'm not hitting my head every time I go through with the tractor. And then the smaller stuff I cut up, these little bushes that grow here, I don't actually know what they are to be honest. They're just uh, prickly, little bushes they grow out full and green in the summertime these I either dig out with the backhoe or uh, just hook a strap to and pull them out with uh, either the four-wheeler or uh, one of the tractors it's not too much to do yet on this uh, on this stone row really just cutting a lot of these lower hanging branches off there's a tree all the way down at the end down there that I hit my head on every time I go around on the tractor so I'm gonna go ahead and trim that up get some of those branches cut off and uh, then bring the trailer through with the four-wheeler and clean it all up. It shouldn't take, uh, shouldn't take me more than an hour or so today to finish that up. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll probably start with the, uh, the pole saw, trim some of these lower hanging branches off, then come through with the weed eater, chop up some of that old dead grass down there just to be able to see easier what I've got to cut up. And uh, we'll go from there, see if we need to bring anything else in.
So as you can see, the, the thing that I like to do and that I found the easiest is to go along the whole stone row um, with the pole saw and trim a lot of those low hanging branches. Uh, that way they're not in the way when I'm trimming these, these smaller bushes and trees that are growing up along the edge. Uh, I was able to get most of the branches. There are still some that are hanging down a little bit lower than I'd like. I didn't bring the extension that I have for the pole saw. It's an additional four feet. So I should be able to get everything else with that. And there's a couple branches here um, on this tree that I wanna take off. This one here coming out into the field and then uh, this one too because it comes out and it's got so much weight on the end of it that these branches kind of hang down and they hang down even lower in the summertime uh, when I'm coming through mowing with the tractor and those are some of the ones that I always hit my head on so I'll bring the the chainsaw out they're not very high above ground so I can cut those off with the chainsaw I've got it mostly cleared um, weed eating there at the end uh, as you might be able to see, probably not because a lot of them are real small. It kind of exposes just a few uh, small woody, uh, brushy uh, stuff that's growing up. I can come through then with uh, either the pole saw or the, the small chainsaw and trim those off. The only thing I've got left are some of those bushes down on that end and then some of the bushes down on this end that I didn't really want to mess with uh, trying to pull them out with the lawn. I figured I'd just either come up and wrap a chain around the bottom of them with the tractor or uh, just dig them out with my dad's backhoe. But I like to clean everything up as stuff comes down. And this is the prime example why. You can probably see um, there's this piece right here and there's a whole bunch of stuff piled right here. There was a tree right on the end of this stone row and it fell down, I would guess, probably a year or two before I bought the property. Um, and instead of cleaning it up and, and dumping it over in the woods, they just kind of sawed it up and pushed it here onto the stone row. Well, as that stuff breaks down, um, it allows for some of this brush and small trees, bushes, thorn bushes to grow in here because you can't cut close enough uh, with these big pieces in here to avoid hitting them with, with your uh, mower or, or hay bind um, to avoid damage, damage to that piece of equipment. So you end up cutting out a little bit further in the field and then it allows this stuff to grow. And then, like I said, over time you lose um, you know, maybe a, a foot or two each year um, for the first couple of years and then it slows down significantly after that but you're still losing valuable field space and not to mention it, uh, it doesn't look as nice either. I've got a few more branches back here that I want to clean up uh, before I finish things up today and then um, probably over the next week or so I want to get in here before the hay really starts to grow too much more uh, because if I drive over it too much it, it mats it down and and kind of stunts the growth and it's it's much more difficult to cut too so in order to get a more efficient cut i don't like to drive over the fields uh once once the grass starts to grow and and gets a little bit closer to to that height that i'm able to cut but i'm going to come in here and clean this out and then like i said in in about a week or so i'll come back and uh probably with the backhoe and i'll just pull the rest of these bushes out and then i'll show you the finished product uh, i don't have any before and after pictures from all the stuff I did before. I kind of wish I did. Some of them were a lot worse than this field is um, and you can really see a significant difference. And like I said, in a couple places, I gained probably 10 or 12 feet. Um, but thanks for watching today. We'll see you on the next one.